I worship you. I exalt you. Because you give me life. You know, if you need life in your body right now, you can receive it. I exalt you with my heart, Lord. With my heart, I worship you. I exalt you, Lord. I exalt you. Because you give me life. Come on, declare it out right now. That you give me life. You give me breath. You give me a heart to love you with. You give me life. You give me life. You give me breath. You give me a heart to love you with. And all I can do is worship you. All I can do, Lord. All I can do is worship you. I mean, I when the Lord works in us, and He can just give us a heart that wants to please Him. How many want to please the Lord? I said, how many want to please the Lord? You know, the Bible teaches, that Paul said in Ephesians, find out what pleases the Lord. Learning what pleases God. Think about that just a minute. We can please Him. Learning to please Him. I mean, he loves everybody. How many know he loves us? The Bible says God so loved the world. He loves people. Hallelujah. He loves us because we're his kids. Let me just say this. You know, uh, sometimes people think, well, God just, God, uh, everybody belongs to God. Well, not necessarily. Everybody belongs to God because he created them. But you belong to God because he bought and paid for you and you've chosen him. And because you've chosen him, man, there's an extra, there's extra love and grace. I mean, we receive grace because we receive Jesus. But it, it, you just keep on taking a step more. We can come to a place in life where we're pleasing God all the time. Pleasing him. And the greatest, man, you, sometimes you wish you could take a key and stick it in hearts because it's the heart. And the greatest thing you can do is just ask God, Lord, give me a heart to love you and to worship you and, and a heart that wants to please you. So we're going to sing this one more time. And sometimes those words kind of just have a way of soaking in and, and a heart that wants to just please him. Amen. I exalt you with my heart. With my heart, I worship you. I exalt you, because you give me life, because you give me life. Come on, declare it. You give me life, because you give me life. You give me breath. You give me a heart to love you with, because you give me life. You give me breath, you give me a heart, Lord, to love you with. You give me life, because you give me life, you give me breath, you give me a heart, Lord, to love you with, and all I can do. Is worship you oh, all I can do is worship you why because he's so good come on let's just thank him he's good tonight Lord thank you for giving us a heart that wants to just love you and serve you a heart that wants to please you and we're not satisfied, we're not pleased until we're pleasing you. 
with our life, with our actions, with everything that we're doing, Lord, we can please you. And we thank you for that tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, you can be seated. Hallelujah. Give Kevin a big hand. He does a wonderful job. Thank you, Kevin. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody say, God is good. And he's so faithful to us. I love the direction of the Holy Spirit. He wants to help us so much. He's so tender. Man, the Holy Spirit is so patient. I you know he's patient. He's tender, and uh, he's just a, he is the, 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 the Spirit of God. Wow. And, uh, man, he's so good to us. Uh, you might go to uh, Philippians chapter 2. Tonight we're just going to get into the Word. We'll have some of these uh, uh, passages, verses up on the screen for you. But, but think about this. I was, uh, we're going to talk about confession. Actually, really, uh, faith is the underlying theme tonight. Actually, fighting the good fight of faith is what we're going to talk about. Um, but we've been teaching off and on on Wednesday nights. Um, I thought I was kind of through uh, talking about confession, um, igniting manifestation. In other words, if you want a manifestation uh, of God, how many know he want, the Spirit wants to manifest? I mean, gifts of the Spirit. I mean, God is interested in manifesting His goodness in our life. But I, uh, anyway, I got, I got stirred up about a verse uh, that really kind of jumped out and got, uh, it's just kind of life. You know, when you stay in the Word, it'll be life. Th- things will jump out to you. You know what I mean by jump out? Just, just, keep, just keep, you know, daily being in the Word, and man, you'll, you'll see nuggets, stuff will just come to life to you. And, um, but Hebrews eleven six, we're talking about pleasing God. Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, everybody say without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we're talking about learning to please Him, well... You need to learn that God really gets excited about faith. He's a faith God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. I mean, obviously, you're here in church tonight. You believe that he is. But watch this. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. We're talking about seeking the kingdom just a minute ago. Seeking first the kingdom. Well, that's seeking God. Seeking him. Seeking what is valuable to him. Uh, what's important to him and learning what pleases God. And I'm telling you, if you, uh, you, you should put faith on your priority list of learning about faith, growing in faith, developing your faith, so you can what? Live by faith. We're called to live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. That's not an option. We're called, I mean, three times in the New Testament, uh, Paul quoting from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, the righteous shall live by faith. He quotes that three times. Galatians 3, 11, all right, Romans 1, 17, the righteous shall live by faith. And then Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29, the righteous shall live by faith. So it's very important. Each one of those, if you were, and we've talked about that in the past, but if you were to look at each one of those, they're, they're, he's kind of covering a little different angle about faith. Romans, Galatians, and, and Hebrews. Um, but, but he said there, really when he gets in Hebrews chapter uh, 10 and 11, he's leading up to 11 and he's talking about faith and he's talking about the lifestyle of, of faith. Life, living a life of faith. Because then he talks about Hebrews 11 and he's given all these heroes of faith and examples of faith. And so they are the testimonies of faith. Anyway, so, but God, God real, gets real excited about faith. So we've been talking about confession and uh, really, if you're going to have faith, or if you have faith, you're going to be um, making some confession. You're going to be, um, you'll be speaking the word. And a lot of people, um, they believe. I mean, you know, if you, you know, sometimes you hear people, they're in situations, going through a, a difficulty or a trial. And they'll say, well, pastor, uh, you know, we're believing. And, and I want to I wanna look at them and say, well, I can tell by the look on your face, you're really not believing. You know, because if you're believing, uh, you're also happy, number one, because faith and joy go together. You can't be in faith and depressed at the same time. And sometimes you can tell by the look on people's faith that they're really working way too hard because faith is a rest. There's a lot of things about faith you have to discover. Faith is a rest. How do you rest? Well, you find you believe what God said. And if you really believe what God says, you're trusting and you're resting. Amen. And you're smiling. And faith opens the door to joy and peace. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing. So if you're in believing, you got some joy and you got some peace. So there's a lot, man. The, the, really, you know, the whole Bible doesn't really talk about faith, but it produces faith. 
Because Romans 10, 17 says faith comes how? By hearing and hearing by the word. So if you want some faith, you need to hear the word. And so you find out a lot of people have trouble just getting their, fighting their way through a wet paper bag because they don't have enough faith to even get out of a wet paper bag. So we're going to talk about fighting a good fight of faith tonight. Is that all right? But let me just remind you what, he, uh, this is Philippians chapter 2, the Amplified Bible says, work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal and fully complete. That means you've got to complete something. Complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling. So you've got to work something out. And we've talked about the way you work that out is through confession, walking things out, learning to... Uh, well, let me give you another scripture. Philemon. This is Philemon. You ever read Philemon? It doesn't take long. Somebody said, well, I, man, I, you're reading the Bible. Philemon, just one chapter right there, verse 6. One little small little letter, Philemon, verse 6, the Amplified again says that the participation in and the sharing or the communication of your faith, hallelujah, may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in our identification with Christ. That means everything that you read in the Word and you say, ooh, that's mine, that's God talking about me, you should talk about it. You should confess it. You should say, like God says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am blessed. Amen. I am rich. By grace, I'm saved. So you communicate, and the best thing you can do, how many know that's a lot better than saying, well, I'm really, I'm no good, or you're singing that song, you're no good, you're no good, you're no baby, you're no good. And you're talking about, you know, no. You want to say, man, I'm blessed, I'm righteous, I, I've been washed in the blood. So all these wonderful, I'm healed. You know, the Bible says you're healed. How many know you're not healed because you feel it? I mean, are you not blessed because you see it? Amen. So you have to start receiving the word. James said, receive with meekness the, the word which is able to save your soul. And what happens is your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, begins to get lined up and renewed with the word of God. You start thinking right. You actually start feeling right. I mean, you don't go by how you feel. You go by faith. That means there'll be sometimes you have to slap yourself and say, you're not going to feel like that no more in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're not going to put, put up with those feelings anymore. Amen. Not going to be depressed. Never, never depressed. Hallelujah. I don't, well, I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling. Quit talking about how you feel and start saying what the Word says. Anyway, so he says communication by the acknowledging, acknowledge every good thing which is in you, in your identification with Christ. So what you have to understand again, so acknowledging those things means communicating those things, and there's actually power when you do it. All right? So faith is the igniter. And God gets excited about faith. In other words, things really don't get moving. Things really aren't activated until you start exercising your faith. How many know what exercise is? How many don't like that word, exercise? Well, you know, exercise is a good thing. Amen. <laughs> and uh, Paul, Paul talks about writing to Timothy, said some people have exercised um, or so exercise and doing good at sin, they just, they just develop, they're really good at it. Because they exercise, they practice it. Well, how many of you can practice the word, amen, and you get real good at doing the word? Anyway, all right, so go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And uh, here, this is, the, this is the verse that kind of jumped out at me recently. Uh, and uh, man, I got it, because, you know, in talking about this subject right here, uh, I really think I need to work on a book because uh, there's a lot of... Actually, let me give you this, and I, I've said it, I'll say it again. Uh, about a year and a half ago, and then we taught on it really last year for a little, little bit, but about a year and a half ago, uh, I woke up early in the morning. Actually, I, I wasn't awake. It was kind of... Anybody ever been... You're, you're, kinda, you're laying there, and uh, I really wasn't... I actually wasn't feeling good. Uh, I had just flown home from San Diego. My daughter was getting married. Uh, I think that's when it was, so it may have been two and a half years ago. And... Uh, and I had flown back, I had to be here for a week, and then I was going to fly back for, the, for the, another ceremony or whatever there was going on out there. And many of you, I wasn't feeling good. And I went to bed that night, really kind of had a little bit of a fever, kind of achy. But in the middle, early in the morning, about four in the morning or so, I heard all of a sudden I was just kind of in that place. I, I was awake, but I was asleep. I, but I knew, where I, I, knew I, I knew I was in my bed. You know what I'm talking about? You just kind of, you, you, you're, you're you know you're where you are, but you're, you, you're kind of like, all right, I'm asleep. But you know where you're just kind of aware of your surroundings. And I heard this phrase, understanding how faith works is the most important thing. I know the Holy Spirit was talking to me. 
heard two phrases, actually. The first one, understanding how faith works is the most important thing. And then right after that phrase, I heard, and we must become proficient in the use of that which should be normal for the believer. Now, when I heard that second phrase, I thought, oh, I better get up and write this down because I, w- I don't, number one, I don't use the word proficient. I needed to look it up. Anybody ever use the word proficient? And uh, it really means skilled. It means skilled. Proficient. You're good at it. So I heard, understanding how faith works is the most important thing. And then right after that, we should become, we must become proficient, skilled in the use of that which should be normal for the believer. And all of a sudden, I realized the second phrase was connected to the first phrase, understanding how faith works is the most important thing. And we should be skilled, we should be proficient in using our faith, and it should be normal for the believer. But in other words, what the Holy Spirit is saying is, I've discovered, and even over the years, it's not so normal. It should be, but it's not. In other words, what's the normal part of understanding how faith works is you're speaking. There's the believing part, and there's the speaking part, and that's what we've got to talk about. And because Paul uses this statement here in 1 Corinthians, I mean, 1 Timothy chapter 6, notice what he says here in verse 12. He says, fight the devil. Is that what he said? (laughs) How many know the Bible doesn't tell you to fight the devil? Really? Yeah, it says resist the devil. It don't say fight the devil. It says resist the devil. Over, all, all through the New Testament, you'll see resist the devil. And, and we, he tells us how to do it, firm in your faith. Resist the devil with your faith. So how do you, remember even in, in Ephesians 6, and Paul says, uh, you know, that you're to lift up the shield of faith, to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. So that means, uh, really, you gotta, your faith actually is a shield that you can develop. So when, the, and when really what those, are, those darts are, those arrows are like, are thoughts coming into your mind. The enemy brings thoughts to you. That's why Jesus said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, you got to cast down thoughts, cast down imaginations, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and take your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. That means look what Jesus did. He was obedient, and just take it to the cross. Take those thoughts to the cross. Make them look at Jesus. Make them look at Jesus. He redeemed you. Amen. So anyway, so... He says here, well, I've got to get to my message. Fight what? The good fight of faith. Everybody say the good fight of faith. Now, this is good. Fight the good fight of faith. Aren't you glad he didn't say the rough fight? Fight the tough tough fight of faith. No, he said fight the good fight of faith. Now, notice the rest of this. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life. That means... Okay, so he's talking about fighting the good fight of faith means taking hold of the eternal life to which you were called. So you've got to lay hold on something, and you do that by fighting the good fight of faith which you were called. And you, now notice what he says here, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. How many know when you got saved, you made a confession? You ha- in order to be saved, you ha- Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you, if you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, and you confess with the mouth, Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That's how you get saved. That's how you started your walk with God, is you made a confession. What did you say? I call him Lord. How many of that's faith working? Paul, if you read Romans 10 in that context, he's talking about, you know, the, the, the right, you know, faith. The righteous of faith that it speaks, the word is near in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we preach. And he's talking about that if you confess you the mouth, Jesus, Lord, believe in your heart, God raised the dead, you'd be saved. Well, that's how you get started. And so he's saying here, you fight the good fight of faith the same way that you started in the beginning, you made a good confession. And how many know Hebrews, all through Hebrews, it says, hold fast your confession of faith without wavering for he who promised is faithful. So in other words, you got to keep saying the same thing. What? Say I'm born again. Say I'm blessed. Say I'm healed. Say I'm, uh, uh, whatever the word says you are, get busy saying it. Communicate it. Amen. Sometimes you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, look at me, boy, I'm talking to you. Don't, don't look down. You look at me. Look at me in the eye. Don't you be looking down. Look at me. I mean, you got to talk to yourself like that. And remember, David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. So he says, fight the good fight of faith, and uh, to which you were called, lay hold on eternal life. So there's something, the life that God has given us, Jesus came to give us life, but he will make you take it. He came to give us life and life abundantly. So that means you could stop just with a little bit, or you could keep going. And you got to lay hold on these things. And that's where so many people, so many Christians just kind of stop and just get comfortable or think, well, if God wants me to have it, I'll have it. No, you got to get your mouth in gear. The, Paul went on to say about the short, remember the shield of faith? He said, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and you get busy with that sword. The Word of God in your mouth. That is the sword of the Spirit. 
make sure you get that one more time. The word of God, you speaking the word of God, the word coming out of your mouth is the sword of the spirit. So uh, you, how many know you could go through, you could go a whole week and not really say the word. You could go all day and maybe talk more about my hip. <laughs> my hip bothering me, you know. Well, lightning fast, you're just calling things that are as though they are. But Romans 4 talks about calling those things as be not as though they were. Talking about, whoo, man, God's working in me. Amen. Power of God's working in me. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I got strong hips. Woo. Anyway. Hallelujah. So, now notice the good fight of faith has a confession that goes with it. That's what I want you to see. The good fight of faith, as you're fighting the fight of faith, it has a confession that goes with it. Now, let me show you something here. There's a couple of things, and we'll just, we'll come to a point here, and I'll, I'll see where we, we unhook. Be, uh, but notice, uh, he says in verse 13, watch this. Because he's going to tell us that Jesus actually made a good confession. He says in verse 13, he said, I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who testified, notice, the good confession before Pontius Pilate. So he says, fight the good fight of faith. And he calls this, Jesus made a good confession. <laughs> well, how many of you would like to find out what did Jesus say? How many like to find out what Jesus said? Well, if Jesus made a good confession, well, all we got to do is go over to John chapter 18 and find out what did Jesus say to Pilate. He made a good confession. Well, I'm glad you asked. Verse 36, Jesus answered to Pilate. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. You know, because Pilate had been questioning about different things. And, and he finally, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, if my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Think about this. He said, my kingdom is not of this realm. Verse 37, therefore Pilate said to him, so you're a king. And Jesus answered, you say correctly that I'm a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. That's about it right there. Paul said even Jesus made a good confession before Pilate. Now, so we go back and we find out, well, this is what Jesus said. What is so important about that? Jesus basically said, my kingdom is not of this realm. He said, you know what, if, I was, if my kingdom was of this realm, you'd be in trouble right now, buddy. He said, but he said, I am a king. How many know the Bible says we're kings? Come on, let's, I mean, we go all kind of angles with this. Jesus, according to Revelation, the Bible says Jesus we have, has made us a kingdom of priests. We're, we're kings. And we're going to rule and reign with him forever and ever. So how do you see yourself right now? Broke? Well, you know, just trying to make a buck, Pastor. Just trying to get a job, you know. Well, nothing wrong with trying to get a job. But when you realize you're a king, you'll start acting different. You'll talk different. You'll respond to people different. Amen? You'll think different. Kings think different. Trust me, kings think way different than paupers. You know what a pauper is? I have no idea. Not a cheese popper or anything like that. Jalapeno <laughs> popper. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going here. So, so we find out that Jesus, really what he's saying is, you know what? I'm, he's making a confession of who he was. That's what God wants us to get a hold of as, 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 as his kids. You're, he says in Romans 8, you're joint heirs. You're more than a conqueror. You're the head, not the tail. I mean, all kinds of wonderful things that he says about it. You've got to know who you are. And that's one of the greatest uh, areas you could study is who you are in Christ. Go through, the, go through the New Testament and find out. Look at all the in him scriptures, who you are in him. I mean, you can start with Ephesians and Colossians and Philippians and all these wonderful things. But anyway, let me show you one more thing. If you go to Hebrews 11, now that was Jesus. Let me show you somebody else that made a good confession. Hebrews 11, verse 13, talking about all these people of faith. He says in verse 13, all these died in faith. In other words, all these people became these prophets and people who, who served God, people who loved God. All these testimonies of people like Noah and David and Joshua and Caleb and Nahum and Isaiah, all these people, John the Baptist. I mean, all these people, he said, they died in faith without receiving the promise. But, now watch this now, this is big. Having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance. In other words, they got a glimpse of what we're actually experiencing now. 
Prophets actually spoke about it, preached about it, proclaimed it, prophesied about it. Remember, uh, Peter stood up, Acts 2, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. So he, I mean, he's talking about what Joel saw, what Joel prophesied about. And he says, having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having what? Having what? Confessed them. One translation talked about they embraced them and confessed that they were stranger, strangers. Now watch this, and exiles on the earth. That means you are alien. That's what Philippians actually says. You're, you're, you are uh, a citizen. We are citizens of heaven. I like to say, you're Havanian. Somebody says, where are you from? We from we, I'm Havanian. Amen. Jesus said, that's where I came from. That's where I'm going. Well, you've been born again. You've been born of God. And you have an eternal destiny. And you need to know who you are. And you need to know where you're going. And you, know where you, need, you need to know where you're going to end up. And that's called really how you operate in this life, faith, because we've got to look a little bit farther out. Notice, let's keep reading here. It says, for those who say such things, what do you say about your future? Those who say such things make it clear that they're seeking a country of their own, and indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, now watch this, they desire a better country. Everybody say a better country. I mean, like Ab the Bible says Abraham, he's the father of faith. The Bible says concerning Abraham, right here in Hebrews 11, if you look, he said he was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Now, I've talked about this before, but our faith is not just to help us in this life, but our faith is to carry us all the way to the new Jerusalem. We're looking for a, new, a, a city whose builder and maker is God. The new, the new, I'm wanting to come, wait, you go, go way at the back of Revelation 22, and he talks about the new heavens and the new earth. But he says they desire a better country, that is a heavenly one, therefore, now watch this, God is not ashamed. Why, now, why is this so big? God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Woo! Some of you just wish, man, I wish I could just get a new house. Jesus already said in John 14, if in my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I, 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 but I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you might be also. Man, he didn't say mobile homes. Aren't you glad he didn't say mobile homes in my father's house and many mobile homes? I lived in a mobile home one time. My wife and I first got married. We was in a mobile home. Ain't nothing wrong with a mobile home, but that wasn't my vision. It was like, man, I'm uh, thank you, Lord, but I'm going to get out this mobile home. Amen. So, uh, but I don't know. Well, there's something about that. But it says God is not ashamed, watch this, to call to be their God because he's prepared. How I many of God's got something good for us? I mean, I mean, that's just, that's just a part of it right there. Not only a city, but I mean, just, I mean, if you just read about the millennium a little bit, in Isaiah, the millennium, the Bible says the Gentiles are come, arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord's risen upon you and the Gentiles will come to, the, to your light and man, you're going to get double for your trouble and man, it's going to be, it's going to be good, y'all. I mean, look up, look up, it's going to be good. All right. So I don't know if that helped you or not, but, but this is called living by faith. So just, just. Back to something here fun. H how's your confession? I was thinking about this, you know, instead of saying, uh, and I've been doing this lately, sometimes certain people I talk to, but, but instead of saying, how you doing today? What do you answer when you say, well, how you doing? Well, what if you're having a bad day? <laughs> Somebody say, Hi, how's things going today? Well, really, start saying this, how's your confession? <laughs> how's your confession? In other words, what have you been saying today? Woo, because what you've been saying is what you're going to get. That's where you're going. If you don't like what you've been seeing, start changing what you've been saying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What you've been saying. Jesus said, I'm a king. My kingdom's not of this realm. Well, is that real? Is that true? Mm. And then you got, you got earthly people just walking by faith. I mean, they didn't even have the Spirit of God in them. They just, they just took the Word and what they'd heard and prophecies and said, man, we're, we're just going to receive the Word from God. Because, I mean, by faith, it says by faith they did this, and by faith Noah built an ark, and by faith Sarah received the ability to conceive, and so forth, and all these different people of faith, and Moses and all the different ones, and David and Samson, you know, you know getting in the lion's den and furs flying everywhere. Anyway, just kidding. 
Anyway, no, that, how many know Samson wasn't in the lion's den? Did y'all catch that one? That was Daniel. No, fur wasn't flying when Daniel was in there because Daniel was a prayer. He just, he just prayed and the Lord shut his mouth. But if Samson would have been in there, man, the kitty would have been in trouble. <laughs> fur would have been flying. Anyway, so it's good to know your, your Bible stories. Anyway, but, but faith works. That's what, a, you know, faith, you know, works in every area. And uh, so all these different people had different, <laughs> different expressions of their faith and how they, how they operated, how they acted. But, but just back to something here. What, what, are you, what are you saying? How do you see yourself do you, in Christ? Born again. Blessed of God. Amen. The glory of God upon you. Hallelujah. Anyway, I, I, he calls that living by faith. So let me close with this, and then, because uh, I, uh, um, I got about three pages here, and that's the bottom of page one. Hallelujah. So I have to always have to figure out where I'm going to stop now, because I, I got some good stuff I want to give you, but I, but I know uh, the mind can only handle what the seat can endure, and it's Wednesday night, and that kind of stuff, and you got kids. But, but uh, let me just close with this one. Uh, how many know what 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, and we'll stop here, and then we'll, we'll pick back up here, I guess. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul, Paul, actually, let, let me just go back to something, and then we'll, we'll read it here. 2 Corinthians 4, I don't have this up. Well, there it is right there, but let, before, we, before you get to that verse uh, here in 2 Corinthians, listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4. How many ever felt like you've been knocked down? How many ever felt like you got, uh, man, the, the rug was just jerked out from under you, or maybe you got punched in the gut, you know, and you lost all your breath? You know, sometimes life hits you like that, man. You just look, man, you know. And uh, certain situations be like that. And you're like, man, what am I going to do? Or, and Paul, uh, he's talking about ministry. Paul's such a great example. Man, I, <laughs> that's some funny stuff. Paul was a funny dude, I'm telling you. Anyway, they say he was a little guy. You know that about Paul? They say he wasn't big. He was kind of a small guy. Anyway, but anyway, it says in, uh, oh, look here in verse 8. Before we get to verse 13, he says, we're afflicted in every way. Well, what would, uh, if he says uh, afflicted or troubled in every way, what would that mean? That means if you look north, there's trouble. If you look south, there's trouble. <laughs> if you look east, we got more trouble. And if you look west, we got more trouble. If you look up, it just looks like trouble. And if you look down, it just looks like trouble. Afflicted in every way, but not what? Crushed. Perplexed, but what? Not despairing. Can you be perplexed? Can you be feeling crushed? And go ahead and smile. That's called the face shield. Crushed. I remember when my... Um, my oldest son, Bracken, he's back there with the red hat. He was a little guy, and uh, well, we had several situations with him, but I remember when he, he had some type of congestion. We had, to, we, had to take him, we had to put him in the hospital, and uh, he was under one of those tents. You know, had to give him IV and get stuff, and he just said, it was just a, one of those bad colds and just chest and stuff, and anyway, so we had, we had him in the hospital. But how many of those, though, you feeling kind of helpless in those situations? And maybe you've had kids or a situation. But, you know, sometimes in those type of situations or, or, you know, even before he was born, Donna had some premature labor issues and stuff. But when you're in some of those situations, you, you need to have a good foundation to stand on. You need to be able to go to God that, that you know, you just you come to a point that you've done all you know to do. And like Paul said in Ephesians, in Ephesians 16, having done all to stand, you stand. And, but you stand in... If you're standing good, you have a smile. I mean, you might feel the pressure. You might feel, my man, this is a tense situation. But, but you're still, you, you might, but on the inside, you're, you have, a, you have a, a confidence. You have a comfort. God is going to come through. Why? Because he's real. No matter what the situation is, and I could give you testimony. I mean, I've been walking with him now for, you know, just in ministry 35 years and growing and learning, and I could give you lots of testimonies. Of just personal stuff, you know, making it through. And God has always come through. He's faithful. Oh, man, I don't know how people make it without him. 
Anyway, so let's keep going here. He says, afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing. Now watch this, persecuted, but not forsaken. And he says, struck down. I mean, knocked down. He's like, struck down, knocked down, but not out. Knocked down? Anybody feel like you were knocked down? Well, if you ever feel like you're knocked down, you have to realize when you have that spirit of faith on the inside of you, you might be knocked down, but, you, but, but that faith will start talking. I'm coming up. Amen. You're knocked down, kicked down. You go, I'm coming up. Something, something's fixing to happen. Something's changing. And he says, always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to the death for Jesus' sake, and the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. Look at verse 13. But having the same spirit of faith. Same as who? Well, he's going to give you an example of David. We won't get there tonight. But he says, having the same spirit of faith. Same, same faith that Jesus had. Fa- same faith that Moses had. Same faith that Noah had. Same faith that Caleb had. Same faith that Joshua had. Same faith that Jesus had. Same faith that God has. Because Jesus said, Mark eleven twenty two, 22, have the faith of God. Have faith in God. Have the faith of God. Greek says, have the faith of God. Whosoever shall say. So we're talking about that. But he says, having the same spirit of faith. Now watch this. According to what is written. So you've got to find out what the Bible says. According to what is written. Everybody say, according to what's written. That means according to what the Bible says, I believed. Well, what happens if you believe? Don't stop there. If you believe, he said, therefore I spoke. We believe, therefore we believe. We speak. So if you know what the word says, but you're really not saying what the word says, that might be your trouble. And everybody shouted on that one. I can tell you're real happy about this. I believed, and I did what? What happened when you got saved? When you, when you first it called on Jesus, you believed that, man, you were dead in your sins and going to hell. You, Jesus was your Savior. You said, man, I need to call upon I need to call in my Lord. And so you did what? You confessed. You called. I believed, therefore I spoke. We believe anything what the Word says. You find out what the Word, I, according to what is written, find out what the Bible says. Find out what it says about your finances. Find out what it says about your body. I found out Psalm 103 says that, that he gave me benefits. He forgives me of all my iniquities, heals me of all my diseases, redeems my life from the pit, crowns me with love and kindness, satisfies my years with good things, and my youth is renewed like the eagle. So you know what I say? I say, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm aging young. It hasn't started working on the gray hair yet, but I'm aging young. Hallelujah. So I find out those benefits. and all, I mean, there's all wonderful things that the Bible says, according to what is written, I believed Therefore, I spoke. I found out the Bible has some things about, says about my finances and about me being blessed and, and, having, and having abundance and supply and angels working on my, my behalf, and, and they respond to the voice of the Word. So if I'm speaking the Word, I get angels working. Amen. That I have protection. You know I'm protected 24-7? How many are you protected 24-7? How many of the Bible says in Psalm 23, He prepares an angel? I mean, He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies? So sometimes you just got to push the devil aside, pull up to the table and say, oh, pass, some, pass the bowl of that uh, blessing over there. Healing, whatever it is, pass it. I'm going to eat right in the presence of my enemies with a smile on my face. Amen. So I, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I, I spoke. We believe, therefore we speak. Did you get something tonight? Praise the Lord. If you didn't like that tonight, come back. We'll talk about David and Goliath next week. Talk a little bit about Paul. Give you some examples about these. How many know what David did to Goliath? He spoke. He got ahead, though. How many know he got ahead? If you really want to get ahead in, get ahead in line, do what David did. <laughs> All right, stand up. Praise the Lord. How many had fun tonight? If you didn't have fun, come back next Wednesday. Come back Sunday. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah for his presence. Thank you for his word. Woo, man, thank God for the word of God. Hallelujah. The B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. Hallelujah. I stand up on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Anybody ever sing that when you was in uh, Sunday school, you know, stuff like that? Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. Hallelujah. It gives us life. Hallelujah. You came to give us life and you sent us the word. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Revelation 19, 13 says that he has a robe dipped in blood, and his name is a name, and his name is called the Word of Life. 
Hallelujah. So we thank you for the word that gives us life. Your word is the word of life. Hallelujah. And so we thank you, Lord. I thank you for every single person in here. I thank you that there, uh, all your blessings, your benefits are available for us. Hallelujah. And just while every head's bowed, every eye's closed, just a minute, I always like to give an invitation. Feel led tonight. If you say, Pastor, I'm not right with God tonight. I'm not sure if I was to die right now, I would go to heaven. And I, and I want to know that I'm right with God. I want to know I'm saved and on my way to heaven. If you're not sure, you know, good works don't get you to heaven. If good works would get you to heaven, then Jesus didn't have to come. It would just go to works based on, but no. Good works don't get you to heaven. Calling upon his name. Maybe you've, uh, maybe you've been in church or maybe you've been saved before, but you say, Pastor, I'm not right with God. Right now, you're talking about eternity and heaven and the new Jerusalem and all that stuff in the future. Listen, you will want to be there. And if you're not right with God and you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I need to get my heart right with God or you need to make him Lord for the first time. If that's you, lift up your hand real high. Anybody for the first time like that? Or maybe, uh, maybe you need to rededicate your heart. Anybody like that? Just lift up your hand real high. Anybody? Just want to make sure. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, I don't see any hands up. Praise the Lord. How many of you got the victory? How many are born again? Well, don't be afraid to say it. Amen. And when you walk by faith, you're going to irritate some people. So I'll talk about that next week. Amen. You want to irritate somebody? Well, just come back, find out how to irritate somebody next week. All right. Well, love on those around you before you go. Don't forget, they have, uh, they're serving up pizza in the cafe out there. So I think they're like two bucks a slice. So if you want some pizza before you go, it, it's, it's, uh, it's diet-free pizza. So go ahead, get you some. And uh, it's the best pizza you can get in town. <laughs> anyway, bless you guys. You're dismissed. Thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. You want to you thank you. You grab that for me, sir?